Pinnell Elvin Roberts, Jr. was an American stage, film and television actor, as well as a singer. In addition to guest starring in over 60 television series, he was best known for his roles as Ben Cartwright's eldest son Adam Cartwright on the Western TV series Bonanza, and as Chief Surgeon Dr. John McIntyre, the title character on Trapper John, M.D. He was also known for his lifelong activism, which included participation in the Selma to Montgomery marches in 1965 and pressuring NBC to refrain from hiring whites to portray minority characters. Early life Roberts was born in 1928 in North Carolina and moved to Waycross, Georgia as an infant, the only child of Pennell Elvin Roberts, Sr., a Dr. Pepper salesman, and Minnie Myrtle Morgan Roberts. During his high school years, Pennell played the horn, acted in school and church plays and sang in local USO shows. He attended, but did not graduate from, Georgia Tech. Enlisting in 1946, he served for two years in the United States Marine Corps. He played the tuba and horn in the Marine Corps Band, and he was also skilled at playing the sousaphone and percussion. He later attended, also without graduating, the University of Maryland, where he had his first exposure to acting in classical theater. He appeared in four productions while a student, including Othello and Antigone, but left school to act in Summerstock. In 1949, he made his professional stage debut with Moss Hart and Kitty Carlisle in The Man Who Came to Dinner at the Olney Theatre in Olney, Maryland. Later, he spent eight weeks at the Bryn Mawr College Theatre in Philadelphia, portraying Dan in Emlyn Williams' Night Must Fall and Alfred Doolittle in Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion. Roberts moved to Washington, D.C. in 1950 and supported himself with a variety of jobs while performing with the Arena Stage Theatre for two years. He performed in numerous productions, including Steinbeck's Burning Bright, The Adding Machine, The Firebrand, The Deletable Judge, The Taming of the Shrew, Playboy of the Western World, Children of Darkness, School for Wives, The Inspector General, The Glass Menagerie, Mr. Arcularis, Twelfth Night, The Scarecrow, The Importance of Being Earnest, Julia Caesar, She Stoops to Conquer, School for Scandal, Three Men on a Horse. Faith of Our Fathers and Dark of the Moon. He performed with the Port Players, in Milwaukee, in the comedy to Dorothea Sun, and other productions. Roberts again is master of all situations, as he has been in the nine previous productions of the season. He performed with the Brattle Theatre's production of The Fellow and Henry IV, Part I, which was later brought to the New York City Center and later, Guys and Dolls with the Cohasset Music Circus. In 1952 he moved to New York City, where he appeared first off-Broadway in one-act operas and ballets with the North American Lyric Theatre, with the Shakespeare Rites, at the Equity Library Theatre, and later on Broadway with performances in Tonight in Samark and The Lovers Opposite Joanne Woodward, and A Clearing in the Woods with Robert Culp and Kim Stanley. He won a Drama Desk Award in 1955 for his performance in an off-Broadway rendition of Macbeth which was followed by the role of Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet. He performed in Twelfth Night, Merchant of Venice, Dr. Faustus, The Taming of the Shrew at the American Shakespeare Festival, and later on Broadway. He performed in St. Joan, Down in the Valley, The Duchess of Malfi, Measure for Measure, and King John. In 1956, he returned to the Olney Theatre, starring opposite Jan Farrand in Much Ado About Nothing with the Players, Incorporated. Group. The same year, Roberts made his television debut in the Shadow of Suspicion episode of Craft Television Theatre, followed by guest starring roles in Whirly Birds, Gunsmoke, Samaran City, Buckskin, Sue Garfoot, and Cheyenne. He signed a contract with Columbia Pictures in 1957 and made his film debut a year later as one of Burlive's contentious sons in Desire Under the Elms. The film was nominated for a Best Cinematography Academy Award. He also landed character roles in such features as The Sheepman. He continued to guest star on television shows such as episodes of Shirley Temple Storybook Theatre, the live broadcast Matinate Theatre, where he starred in Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, and in The Heart's Desire. This was followed by appearances in Trackdown, Buckskin, and episodes of Zane Grey Theatre. Roberts guest starred as Captain Jack Chavez on the NBC adventure series Northwest Passage 
based on the life of Major Robert Rogers in the French and Indian War. He appeared with fellow guest Starface Spain in the 1958 episode Pick Up the Gun of Tombstone Territory and played the lead villain in the 31st episode of Have Gun, Will Travel, portraying a killer boss exploiter of Chinese coolie laborers. In 1959 Roberts guest starred in episodes of General Electric Theatre, Samaran City, Sue Garfoot, Lawman, One Step Beyond, Bronco, 77 Sunset Strip, The Detectives and Has Call. Also in 1959, he co-starred with James Coburn in the film Ride Lonesome. If Roberts felt typecast by westerns, they also provided his finest role in this film, arguably the greatest of the B films starring Randolph Scott and directed by Bud Bowick Titcher. Roberts recognized the film's classic structure. His engaging outlaw, Sam Boone, counterpoints Scott's granite-faced Ben Brigade, maintaining the tension of whether they will work together or clash. He similarly played off James Coburn, who was making his film debut as Boone's quiet sidekick, Wit. The same year he was cast in Bonanza. Bonanza. Roberts played Ben Cartwright's Urbane's eldest son Adam, in the Western television series Bonanza. Unlike his brothers, Adam was a university-educated architectural engineer. Roberts, having largely been a stage actor, accustomed as he was to a rigorous diet of the classics, and to freely move about from part to part, found the transition to a television series, playing the same character, without costume changes, a difficult one. It was perhaps not surprising that, despite enormous success, he bolted from Bonanza after the 1964 Euro 65 season, criticizing the show's simple-minded content and lack of minority actors. It particularly distressed him that his character, a man in his thirties, had to defer continually to the wishes of his widowed father and he reportedly disliked the series itself, calling it a Eurojunk television and accusing NBC of perpetuating banality and contributing to the dehumanization of the industry. The equally self-critical Roberts, had long disdained the medium's commercialization of his craft and its mass production, assembly line mindset. Frustrated with Bonanza and angry, he told a reporter in 1965, I feel I'm an aristocrat in my field of endeavor. My being part of Bonanza was like Isaac Stern sitting in with Lawrence Welk. In much later interviews, Roberts denied statements about Bonanza attributed to him. I did not enjoy Bonanza anymore. But I never said those things people said I said. He was, however, too smart not to recognize its weaknesses. In a 1963 interview, he asked a reporter, isn't it a bit silly for three adult males to have to ask father's permission for everything they do? They told me the four characters would be carefully defined and the scripts carefully prepared, none of it ever happened, he complained to the Associated Press in 1964. He objected to how Bonanza portrayed the relationship between the father and adult sons, describing it as adolescent, lacking in truth, and lacking in reality. Roberts acknowledged reasons for Bonanza's appeal but pointed to his personal need for storylines with greater social relevance, adult themes and dialogue. He wanted Bonanza to be a little more grown up. He also noted too that he was not suited to the procedural and confining aspect of series television, another reason for his dissatisfaction, while on the show. Roberts had had high hopes for what he could contribute to Bonanza, was disappointed with the direction of the show, the limitations imposed on his Bonanza character and on his acting range. In a newspaper interview he said, I haven't grown at all since the series began. I have an impotent role. Wherever I turn there's the father image. Finally, after disagreements with writers and producers over the quality of the scripts, characterization, and Bonanza's refusal to allow him to perform elsewhere while on contract, Roberts turned his back on Hollywood wisdom and well-meant advice and left, largely to return to legitimate theater, Henry Darrow Archival Interview. USA Today, January 25, 2010 Roberts fulfilled but did not extend his six-year contract for Bonanza, and when he left the series, his character was eliminated with the explanation that Adam had moved away. Later episodes suggested variously that Adam was at sea, had moved to Europe, or was on the East Coast, running that end of the family business. 
The last episode Pinnell Roberts worked on was Dead and Gone, air date April 4, 1965. He appeared in the next two that aired which were filmed prior to Dead and Gone a Euro A Good Night's Rest, air date April 11, 1965 and To Own the World, air date April 18, 1965. Adam Cartwright was mentioned on occasion in the series. Dortort had hoped Roberts might return, but he never did. In television interviews, Roberts said that he would have stayed with Bonanza, had he been allowed to do so on a part-time basis to enable him to return to theater. Bonanza producer David Dortort described Roberts as rebellious, outspoken, and aloof, but, as one who could make any scene he was in better. In a later archive interview, he regretted not having insisted on a marriage for Adam, and having Roberts continue on the show as a semi-regular. He added, I must confess I was too hard on him. I did not appreciate him. I knew he was good, but I didn't realize he was that good. None better. In the last two Bonanza movies that aired on NBC in the early 1990s, the storyline stated that Adam, now in Australia, had equaled his father's success, dominating the engineering construction business. Roberts was the only accomplished singer of the original cast, though David Canary, who joined Bonanza in 1967, had a background in voice and performed on Broadway. During Robert's Bonanza years, he recorded Come All Ye Fair and Tender Ladies, a folk music album which Olmesic calls the softer, lyrical side of folk music a Euro pleasant and not challenging, but quite rewarding in its unassuming way. The album, released by RCA Victor and arranged by Dick Rosmini, is available on compact disc only as part of the fourth disc of the Bonanza 4 CD box set on Bear Family Records. On the Bonanza box set albums, Roberts also sings Early One Morning, In the Pines, The Newborn King, The Bold Soldier, Mary Ann, They Call the Wind Mariah, Sylvie, Lily of the West, The Water is Wide, Rake and a Ramblin' Boy, A Quiet Girl, Shady Grove, Alberta, and Empty Pocket Blues. Roberts stated that he loved his co-stars and didn't want to leave them but the money just wasn't that important to him at the time. He felt he could do better elsewhere. After Bonanza After Bonanza, Roberts played the Straw Hat Circuit, regional theaters, and episodic TV, which gave him the opportunity to play a wide variety of roles. He toured with musicals such as The King and I, Kiss Me Kate, Camelot and their music band and dramas such as Tiny Alice. He played Jigger in an ABC television presentation of Carousel and was featured in a CBS Playhouse production, Dear Friends. In 1967, Roberts starred in the lavish, but short, lived David Merrick production of Marta Hari, directed by Vincent Minnelli. The show had a much publicized chaotic preview performance due to technical problems stemming from lack of rehearsal time at the Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C., where the preview performance took place. What was offered the people of Washington was a dress rehearsal. David Merrick spoke to the audience beforehand warning them of this. Problems were corrected by the official opening night, when the show received good reviews for Roberts, musical score on lyrics, stage design and costumes, but poor reviews for its co-star and other aspects of the production. The show, nevertheless was thought to have the potential to continue to Broadway. Marta Hari was a show with a great story, two fascinating characters and some accessory mess that could have easily been tidied up by anyone but Vincent Minnelli. But Merrick, instead of bringing someone to clean house closed the production down. In 1972, Roberts returned to Broadway and toured with Ingrid Bergman in Captain Brassbound's Conversion, in which he played the title role. Particularly helpful is Pinnell Roberts in the acted-upon title role. This actor is a sturdy, not unamusing leading man type and may his appearance as a Bergman co-star be rewarded beyond Bonanza. In 1973, Roberts was nominated for a Joseph Jefferson Award for his performance in Welcome Home, at the Ivanhoe Theatre in Chicago. The same year, Roberts starred as Rit Butler opposite Leslie Ann Warren, in another major production, Gone with the Wind, at the Chandler Pavilion in Los Angeles again receiving good personal reviews, amidst weak reviews for the rest of the show. Additional stage credits after Bonanza include two for The Seesaw, A Thousand Clowns, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 
any Wednesday in The Sound of Music. He did The Night of the Iguana while still playing in Bonanza in 1963. Roberts guest starred in TV shows such as The Girl from UNC Ali, The Virginian, The Big Valley, Lancer, Mission, Impossible, Marcus Welby, M.D., The Wild Wild West, Ironside, The Rockford Files, Gunsmoke, Mannix, Vega Dollar, The Odd Couple, Hawaii Five-O, The Love Boat, The Hardy Boys Nancy Drew Mysteries, San Francisco International Airport, Nakia, Night Gallery, The Bold Ones, The Quest, Police Story, Most Wanted, West Medical, Man from Atlantis, Jigsaw John, Sixth Sense, Quincy, M.E., The Feather and Father Gang, Hawkins, Men from Shiloh, Perry Mason, Wide World of Mystery, and The Six Million Dollar Man, and appeared in miniseries, including Captain and the Kings, Centennial, Hotel, The Immigrants, and Around the World in Eighty Days. He starred in two cult films, Four Road Out and Kashmiri Run, directed by the veteran TV director John Pisa, and made some feature films, including The Magic of Lassie. He co starred or was featured in several TV movies, including The Adventures of Nick Carter, Dead Man on the Run, The Night Rider, The Silent Gun, The Lives of Jenny Dolan, The Deadly Tower, Hot Rod, Desperado, The Bravos, High Noon, Part 2 and Assignment Munich. In 1979, Roberts again achieved superstar status as the lead in Trapper John, M.D., receiving an Emmy nomination in 1981, and playing the character twice as long as Wayne Rogers had on CBS's MASH series. Roberts told TV Guide that he chose to return to weekly television after watching his father age, and realizing that it was a vulnerable time to be without financial security. The show allowed Roberts to both use his dramatic range and address issues, wrote The Independent. Of the period between series, Roberts said he enjoyed moving around and playing different characters. During that time, he also toured university campuses conducting seminars on play production, acting and poetry. In 1988, Roberts co-starred with Miller Jovovich in the TV movie The Night Train to Kathmandu. He guest starred as Hezekiah Horn in the powerful Young Riders episode, Requiem for a Hero, for which he won a Western Heritage Award in 1991. In interviews, Roberts had described television as a director's and film cutter's medium, but he himself was described as a born television actor, low-key, in the 1980s and 1990s, playing off his Trapper John M.D. persona, Roberts acted as TV spokesman for Ectrin, a brand of analgesic tablets. Recent roles included Donor with Melissa Gilbert and Checkered Flag. He appeared as captain of the CBS teams for Battle of the Network Stars 11 and 12. He narrated documentaries, including the National Geographic episode, Alaska, The Great Land, in 1965. In the Realm of the Alligator, in 1986. The TV special Code One, about the work of paramedics, 1989 and the Mountain Men episode of the History Channel, 1999. From 1991 to 1993, in his last venture into series television, Roberts lent his distinctive voice to host and narrate the TV anthology series, FBI, The Untold Stories. He made his last TV appearance in 2001 on an episode of Diagnosis, Murder, updating a Mannix character he had portrayed decades before. In his later life, and after the death of all of his former Bonanza co-stars, Roberts jokingly referred to himself as, Pennell, the last one, Roberts. He read Bonanza Gold magazine, which was like looking at an old family album he said, and watched reruns of Bonanza when he wanted to see old friends. Personal life and death, Roberts married four times, first in 1951 to Vera Maria Euro a professor of theater history at Washington State University and subsequently Hunter College as well as Professor Emerita of the Ph.D. program in theater at City University of New York a Euro with whom he had his only child. Pinnell and his first wife later divorced. Chris Roberts, who lived variously in California and New York, attended Franconia College and died in a motorcycle accident in 1989 at age 38, sometimes reported as age 37. 
Roberts married Judith Anna Lebrecht on October 15, 1962. They divorced in 1971. He subsequently married Kara Nack in 1972, divorcing in 1996. At the time of his death a euro from pancreatic cancer on January 24, 2010 a euro Roberts was married to Dr. Eleanor Crissel. Shortly after his death, his friend and former co-star, Gregory Harrison, released a statement, Pinnell was a wonderful man, a good friend, and a big part of my life, especially when I was just beginning as an actor. He was a true inspiration to me, as he was to many actors over the years. I was so lucky to have shared the screen with him for nearly eight seasons, and I'm deeply saddened at his passing. Fortunately, he lives on in the memories of his fans, and in the hearts of the lucky people, like you and me, that he touched personally. I'll be forever grateful to him. References External links Pinnell Roberts at the Internet Movie Database